hello guys so look this is one of the mountains over my house okay i think that's el cerro de las mitras i believe and uh you know one of the applications of trigonometry is that it allows you to find the height of things like this okay very very tall things like cerros mountains all these type of things uh, and the mathematics behind this process is actually not complex you actually need a little um, you know mm, kind of complex instrumentation you know the devices that you have to use are a little complex and they have to be very precise but the math the math behind the process is not complex so you can see how trigonometry is used we can calculate the height of that enormous object and people say mathematics is useless so go figure hello class welcome to today's lesson which is lesson two for the topic number three and this lesson is about trigonometric functions of the angles of right triangles quite a long name okay let's see what this is about first let me tell you why trigonometry is very important guys it is extremely extremely important it's one i mean there's a reason why you were taught trigonometry since junior high you know maybe a little bit and uh, there's a reason why trigonometry is one of those essential staples in in uh, in high school and in college okay there is a reason for that what is the reason well there are many applications of trigonometry and the reason i think and many other people think in this way is because when you consider a triangle guys okay you can think of a triangle as kind of like the the atom okay the atom or the most essential element in which many other geometric figures uh, geometric shapes can be decomposed what do i mean by this for example consider a square okay this is one of the most uh, basic polygons of course a square and as you can know it can be decomposed into triangles you see so the square can be understood as simply the putting together of two of these elementary atoms okay elementary triangles the same for the rectangle clearly okay any other polygon the pentagon okay you can uh, partition it in triangles you see three triangles and so on guys you know I don't need I don't need to go on forever okay so you can see that any polygon any polygon no matter how complex you know if I draw any weird shape this is also a polygon I can always always break any polygon into into triangles there you have one there you have two three four five six and seven okay you see any polygon any polygon can be bro broken down into triangles and you may think of this as the atoms of this universe okay and you may think of all of these figures as molecules okay molecules are made of atoms or if you want another analogy you can count these things these objects your triangles as cells and these things are as organs or something like that okay so you you get the analogy that's why triangles are very important guys because many of the problems that you can uh, that you can come up with in in uh, in regards to these polygons can be solved by making use of triangles let me show you other applications whenever you play video games I, I suppose you play video games whenever you do that thing uh, you are using trigonometry whether you know it or not uh, for example look at this bunny and this rabbit uh, when you when when people make video games when programmers make video games they render the images for uh, as polygons or, or as triangles in, in this way okay and the more triangles you get for the figure okay the more the more the triangle count you get 
you see the figure gets closer and closer to reality okay look at mario okay the first the first uh mario 64 game which is was which was launched in about 2000 i think i was about 14 or 15 look it's pure triangles it's just triangles guys okay it's made up of polygons which are triangles of course and that's it that's how that's how programmers um uh, code the the visuals with triangles and the more triangles you get in a in a shape the better it's gonna look okay up until a point in which you cannot differentiate uh, the a smooth surface from a from a poly, polygonal surface. Okay, what other applications have you ever wondered how we know the distance from the Earth to the stars? I mean, these things are very far away, and when I mean very far away, I mean it. How do we know that? Okay, how do we know the distance from the Earth? Let's suppose this is the Earth. How do we know that distance? from the Earth to the stars. Let me show you. Okay guys, so I'm gonna tell you about the parallax effect. So I have this pen, I'm holding this pen, and I'm gonna keep it fixed in just in front of me. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna move my eyes, uh, quote unquote, which I mean the cell phone, and I'm gonna move to the left and you're going to see how the, the pen will appear to move to the right. Here we go. I'm going to move the cell phone, not the pen. You see? It looks as though the pen is the one that's moving. And the other way around, if I move the cell phone to the right, the pen is going to look as though moving to the left. You see? That's the effect. I'm keeping the pen completely fixed. And this is the phenomenon that we know as parallax. And with this phenomenon, and with a little trigonometry on, on paper, you can actually calculate the distance to the stars with a lot of accuracy. So it's pretty cool. Okay. And so, as you can see, guys, trigonometry is very, very used in engineering, science, technology, everywhere. So that's that's a little taste of the uses of trigonometry. Now let's go over the matter. Okay, what are we gonna do today, guys? Well, today we're gonna define the trigonometric functions of the angles of right triangles. First of all, what is a right triangle? Well, it's a triangle which has a right angle, okay? The name, the technical name is right, right angled triangle. Okay, that is the correct name, but it's way too long. So uh, you, we're just going to call them right triangles. Most people just call them right triangles. When your triangle has a right angle, then uh, it's called a right triangle. Okay, and that's, that's the definition of a right triangle. It's a triangle that has a right angle. And what is a right angle? It's an angle of 90 degrees. Another very important that I should point out, a very important thing, is this. For example, let's suppose that you observe this on a notebook or whatever. Let me do it a little better. There you go. Okay. If, if somebody tells you that this is a right triangle because it looks like so, that is a little incorrect, okay? You have to specify that it is a right triangle. And the way to specify it in mathematical symbology is writing this little symbol, okay? This little symbol means right angle. It means this is a right angle. And therefore, by, by writing this little symbol, you are already stating or specifying that this triangle is a right triangle. If you just look at this in any book or anywhere, if you look at something that resembles a right triangle, but it doesn't have this symbol or the author doesn't tell you, hey, look, this is a right, this is a right triangle. And this is 
the the right angle something like that okay if you just if you just assume that something like this is a right triangle because it looks like one you are wrong okay remember the drawings in mathematics are just for um you know for uh um, what what can i say for reference you know it's just a little sketch you should not take them very seriously you should not say that because this one looks this angle looks like a right angle then it is so that is an incorrect assumption okay you need to know you need to specify that either in this way uh, another way you can do this is the following for example if uh, if you call this angle A and this angle B and this angle C, and if you read angle C is 90 degrees, okay, then you know that this is a right triangle. Otherwise, you cannot make that assumption. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, let's go over the definition of... Uh, let me erase the whole thing. Let's define the... The trigonometric functions of a right triangle. So let's write given a right triangle, okay, and I'm gonna draw it. Okay, this is a right triangle because it has a symbol for right angle, and I'm gonna label the sides and the angles. It's usually done in this way. Usually, we call the sides A, B, and C. Both catheti are called A and B, usually, and the hypotenuse is called C, usually. And the angles opposite to each of these sides are also called the same way, but with capital letters. So, for example, this angle right here, which is opposite to the side A, is called angle A, with capital letters. Um, this angle, which is opposite to the side B, or the catheter B, is known as angle B, capital letter, and the same for this other angle, okay? This is the right angle opposite to the hypotenuse C, and it's also called C, capital C. Now, when you write, guys, sometimes you can get confused with, uh, you know, um, ca capital capital, no, what, what is it called, Upper, uppercase and lowercase c. So in order to make the distinction, I like to do this. This little thing in here, for me, that means uppercase c, or capital case, capital C, okay, instead of uh, lowercase c. So I, I encourage you to do the same, because otherwise you're going to get confused in deciding which one is which which is a problem that uh, A and B don't, don't present. Okay, so given a right triangle, we define the trigonometric functions of the acute angle A as the following. We have three trigonometric functions. We have sine of A, and the, and the sine of A is defined as its opposite catheters. Remember, this is the angle A, this is this one specifically, the opposite catheters over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be A over C, and then the cosine of A, of angle A, is defined as the adjacent side B over the hypotenuse C and finally the tangent of A is defined as its, uh, its opposite catheters which is A over its adjacent catheters which is B so these are the three definitions guys for the acute angle A of a right triangle okay now you can also define this these same functions sine cosine and tangent for b okay a has not the angle a is not important in itself you can also do the same for b if this is the angle b then the sine of b 
is equal to its opposite catheters, which is this one, B, over the hypotenuse, etc. Okay, you, you do the same thing, but with respect to B, and that's it. Okay, A has nothing important or nothing special in and on itself. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's the definition of these of these three functions: sine of A, cosine of A, and tangent of A. And I'm making the look. I'm I'm introducing this word: acute, acute angle. What is that? Acute is agudo, angulo agudo. Why? Because uh, these two angles are in fact acute. If you remember, an acute angle is an angle between zero, okay, when, when your angle is greater than zero or less than 90 degrees, then this angle is called acute, acute angle. And the, uh, these two angles from any right triangle must be acute. Okay, they, they have to be uh, less than 90, always. That's a property, okay? It's not because I say so. Okay, so that's it. Those are, those are the three definitions. And now I'm going to tell you what we mean by resolving a triangle, a right triangle. Okay, resolving... A triangle, yeah, in general, you know, they don't have to be right triangles. Resolving a triangle means finding its three sides and three angles, okay? If we know at least two elements. Two elements okay and one one being a side okay so that's what resolving a triangle means well in particular we're gonna resolve right triangles but uh, later on we're, we're gonna resolve any type of triangle and uh, we need at least when you're talking about right triangles guys uh, you need at least two things you already have one thing, the right the right angle. If you talk about a right triangle, that that's because you already know that this angle is 90 degrees. So you already know one thing, and you also need another two things, either uh, for example one side and one angle, or two sides, etc. But at least at least you have to have a side. Okay, one of those known facts have to be has to be one side. If you are given only the three angles, like you know this angle, this angle, and this angle, you cannot resolve the triangle. At least one of the known facts has to be what a side. That's it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to resolve three triangles. It's extremely easy. And let's get on with it. So we have these three examples. It's extremely simple. Okay. So the first one, we have the following. A right triangle has a hypotenuse of 5 and an acute angle of 30 degrees. Resolve the triangle. Okay, so we draw, we sketch the right triangle. I specify that it's a right triangle. Okay, by doing this, this is my right angle. And what else do we know? This one has a hypotenuse of 5. And an acute angle of 30 degrees. Which one is the, is the acute angle? It doesn't matter. You choose it. It doesn't matter. So this is 30 degrees. Okay. So let me label the other two sides. This is A. This is B. This is C, which is 5. We already know it. This is the angle A, opposite to side A. This is the angle B, opposite to side B. And this is my angle C, capital C opposite to hypotenuse C. Okay, and I need to find A, B, and, uh, and this other angle B. Side A, side B, and angle B. Okay, let's do it. What do we do? We use the trigonometric functions. That's all we have to do. For example, let's start. Mm, for example, look, I can find 
this one, side A, by using the sine of this angle. Why? Because the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite side, which is A, side A, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. There you have it. And then, since I know the angle A, I can substitute sine of 30 degrees equals A over 5. And then I just... Uh, what is this called? Isolate A. Yeah. 5 times the sine of 30 equals A. And there you have it. Okay. A equals 5 times the sine of 30 degrees. This is the correct uh, answer or the, the exact answer. A equals 5 times the sine of 30. You can leave it like this. That is perfectly fine. And that is the correct and the, 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 the exact answer. Now, if you want to approximate A, that's also okay, no problem. But you have to write this symbol, remember. And let's multiply 5 times the sine of 30 with your TI. And you're going to get, well, no, this is in fact 2.5. This is an exact solution. You know, sometimes you get exact solutions. If you look at, if you, if you look at your calculator, it throws you this number and no other decimals. So that means that this is in fact... Uh, this is also um, an exact solution. So A is equal to this. And we're done with A. We have this. Now B, how do we get B? Well, you can use Pythagoras theorem because now you know you know this side and you know the hypotenuse. So you can get this by the, by the, by the Pythagoras theorem. Or you can use the cosine of 30 degrees of this angle, right? Because the cosine of A is equal to adjacent side, which is B, over 5, which is the hypotenuse, and then cosine of the angle A, which is 30 degrees, equals B over 5, and then B equals 5 times cosine of 30. One more time, this is the exact solution. And now I believe that in this case, if you perform this in the calculator, let's do it, everybody. Yeah. In this case, it's going to throw you a lot of decimals. And what that means is that if you put like something like this, I'm going to keep it uh, up until two decimals. This is just an approximate answer. Okay. So these are my solutions. Okay. So I have found A and I have found B. And now the angle B, well, this is very simple, right? All we have to do is make use of the theorem that says that the sum of the, the three angles in a triangle uh, is 180. So this is 30, this is 90, and therefore this one has to be 60. And that's it. So angle B is equal to 60 degrees. And I have found all the remaining quantities for my triangle. I have resolved the triangle, okay? Because I know all its sides and all its angles. That's what this uh, command um, tells you. That's, that's what this command means. Resolving a triangle is finding all its features. Okay, uh, number two. A right triangle has one catheter equal to four. By the way, if you think that you can do this on your own, like go straight to the workbook, okay? I get it. I, I mean, this is extremely simple, extremely simple. And you don't have to watch me doing all these things, okay? You don't have to. So go straight work on the, on the workbook. But if you want to look at them, okay, you're welcome. Number two, a right triangle has one catheter equal to four and its opposite angle equal to 40 degrees, resolve the triangle. Okay, one more time, let's draw, let's draw the triangle, the right triangle. This is the right angle. Let me label the sides, A, B, C, angle A, angle B, angle C. Okay, and what do we know? We know one catheter is equal to four. Which one? It doesn't matter. So let me, let me choose A. 
and its opposite angle, the opposite angle to this catheters is 40 degrees. So this angle A is 40 degrees. Okay, perfect. Resolve the triangle. And we do the same. I need to find this, the hypotenuse C, the catheters B, and the angle B. There you go. Let's find the angle. It's very simple. One more time. This is 40 degrees. This is 90 degrees. And therefore, this one has to be 50. So that 50 plus 40, we get 90. Plus 90, 180. So that's why B has to be 50 degrees. And we have already one feature found. Okay, now let's find B and C. Catheters B and hypotenuse C. How can I find um, the catheters B? I use the trigonometric functions. For example, of this angle. This angle right here. Let me use tangent. Tangent of 40. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find B in two different ways so that you understand that there is just not one way to solve it. There are many ways you can get uh, e either of these features, okay? First, I'm going to use, I'm going to, look, this is the, the way number one. Tangent of 40 degrees is equal to opposite side over adjacent side. So we get 4 over B, okay? Isolate B, and you're going to get 4 over tangent of 40. I don't need to go into the details. You should know what I did. And that's it. Just calculate B in the calculator. Write 4 over tangent of 40 degrees. And you will get 4.767. And one more time, that's just an approximation. So I should write, I should write this. This is the exact solution. And this is the, the approximated solution. Okay? So I have found B. Now let me show you how I can find it in another way. Second, uh, second version. Uh, what about using not the tangent of 40, which I did in this case? What about using the cosine of 40? Uh, no, no, we cannot do it that way. Uh, we can use, okay, this one, this one, cosine of 50 degrees. Cosine, no, it's not going to work either. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, how can I find it in another way right now? Uh, uh, cosine, no, 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 yeah, yeah, that, no, that's right. I can use tangent, tangent of 50, tangent. You see, you have to think a little. Tangent, uh, in here I, I use tangent of 40, but in here I can use tangent of 50 degrees. Look, tangent of 50 degrees, which is this one, is the opposite side, which is B, over the adjacent side to 50, which is 4. There you go. And then just, just calculate this, uh, isolate B. You're going to get that B equals 4 times the tangent of 50 degrees. And let's do that. 4 times the tangent of 50. And we get the same answer. We get approximate, approximately... 4.767. So this is my exact solution. This is my approximated solution. Okay. And these are the same. It's the same value as this. You see. In here I use tangent of 40. And in here I use tangent of 50. Which one is right? All of them. Okay. As long as you're doing something correct. Both, both ways work. Okay. So now we have B. The side B. And finally, how do we get the hypotenuse C? Well, I can use now the, for example, let's use the sine of 40 degrees. The sine of 40 degrees, which is the sine of A. Sine of A equals opposite side, 
which is A over hypotenuse, which is C. I know the angle A, so I'm going to substitute. A is 40 degrees. I know also the side A, you see it here, 4 over the hypotenuse C. And if I isolate the hypotenuse, I'm going to get 4 over the sine of 40 degrees. And finally, that, that's, my, that's my exact solution. C equals 4 over the sine of 40. This is the exact solution. And the approximate solution will be 6.22. 6.22. So there you have it. You could have also used the Pythagoras theorem, right? Because now you know B and you know A, you know both catheters, and you can use the Pythagoras theorem to get C. So you see, there are many ways in which you can uh, get the same, the same, uh, uh, the same values. It doesn't matter what way you use. Let me see how much time has passed. Thirty. No, I'm gonna keep it right there. Okay, try to do this one on your own. I'm going to stop it right there. I don't want to bore you to death. And um, that's it, guys. So thank you so much. And let's get to work on the workbook.